In this video, I'm going to show you how to optimize your settings in OBS for best results when streaming live video. Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. OBS is a free program that you can use to live stream video. There's a link where you can download the program in the description of this video. I recommend it for people who are starting to live stream, and I've been getting questions in the comments of my videos and on my Facebook page about what settings to use. So I'm going to go over what you should adjust, what you should leave alone, and how to get the most out of your live stream and recordings in OBS. First off though, I'm going to assume you've watched one of my other videos where I talk about how to get video into OBS and how to connect to Facebook or YouTube for streaming. If you need details on that, I have a link to those videos down in the description as well. Right now, I'm just going to be talking about how to get the best results out of OBS for live video streaming and recording. In OBS, click on the Settings button where we'll be making all of our adjustments. We'll start on the video page, and first, let's talk about these settings for base resolution, output resolution, and frames per second. You're going to need to know or go figure out what resolution your video coming into OBS is. For example, this would be the video standard you've set in your ATEM switcher, or what your camera is outputting on its HDMI cable in a single camera situation. This is what you should set your base resolution to. For the sake of this example, let's say it's 1080p 60, so we'll set our canvas to 1920 by 1080. The next thing you'll want to understand is what are the requirements of the destination you are streaming to. For instance, Facebook still limits live video to a maximum resolution of 1280 by 720. Now here's where you need to make a decision. If you scale the output resolution here to 1280 by 720, this is the most efficient place to do it because it processes the scaling of the resolution in your graphics card rather than on your CPU, which is a good thing. But this output feeds both the stream as well as the recording. So if you are also recording with OBS and you want your recording to maintain the full 1080p resolution, don't scale it here. We'll scale the stream later in the encoder. So again, if you're not recording with OBS, only streaming, or maybe you don't care that your recording is scaled down, configure your output scaling here on the video page since it will be the most efficient way to do it. If you are recording and want to maintain the full resolution in your recording, don't scale here, just set your output resolution the same as your base canvas. As far as frames per second goes, I'd always set this to 29.97 or 30. If your input video frame rate is 59.94, set it to 29.97. If your input is 60 frames per second, set it to 30. This is just my opinion, but I don't see much gained in sending out higher frame rates when you're streaming. You're just going to be eating up bandwidth to send out more frames. Instead, that bandwidth could be used to make each frame look better. Okay, let's move on to the output page. The first thing you're going to want to do is switch from simple to advanced. Now on the first tab, we have the settings for our stream. If you're going to Facebook, and back on the video page chose to leave your scaled resolution the same as the canvas, check here and select 1280 by 720. So now the encoder itself is going to be doing the scaling of the streamed video. There are two options under encoder. The default is x264, which uses your computer CPU to do the encoding. And the other option, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, is the NVIDIA encoder or NVENC encoder which offloads the encoding to your computer's graphics card. If you have a newer NVIDIA graphics card and maybe are running an i5 processor instead of an i7, this is a great way to reduce the load on your computer's CPU, especially, as we'll see in a minute, if you're recording a different encoding at the same time. I've heard some people report that the graphics card encoding isn't as stable as CPU encoding, so be sure and test this out pretty well before you rely on it, but it's always worked well for me. Down here under the rate control, for live streaming, you'll always want to choose CBR or constant bitrate. And now we come to the big one, bitrate. Bitrate in a nutshell is how much data or information the encoder is going to cram into every frame. So obviously the higher the bitrate, the better your stream will look. But the trade-off is higher bitrates use more bandwidth. So you need to know what your internet connection's upload speed is in order to set this. Usually you'll want to stay at 50 to 70% of your upload bandwidth, but that's a general statement. You may need to tweak that depending on your environment. As a general rule of thumb, with a 1280 by 720 stream, 
you'd want to have a minimum of about 2,500. But I would recommend around 3 to 4,000 for a good looking stream. Facebook's live video specification calls for a maximum bitrate of 4,000. If you're on YouTube for a 1920 by 1080 stream, I'd say a minimum around 4,000 and ideally up to 5 to 6,000 would be a good place to start. Usually you'd set the keyframe to 2 and Facebook actually says that they require a keyframe every 2 seconds. I found lately that the auto setting looks just as good if not better and I haven't seen it cause any problems on Facebook. I'd say set it to 2 and you'll be fine, or you could try 0, I think it may improve your stream ever so slightly. The rest of these, and they are going to be different depending on if you have the X264 or the NVIDIA encoder selected, but either way, leave them at the defaults. You'd really only deal with these to solve a problem, and if you set them wrong, it can actually cause problems, so leave them alone. Now on the recording tab, you get a similar set of options for how you want to encode your video for recording. Obviously, you set the file path where the video will be stored. Make sure it's a fast hard drive, and SSD would be best. I like to choose MP4 as my file type because it's the easiest to bring into any editing software. Just be aware of this warning that pops up here when you use MP4. If OBS or your computer were to crash before you click stop, you'd lose your entire recording. Again, you choose the encoder, either running on your CPU or your graphics card, or you can select to just pass what the streaming encoder is doing straight to the file. If your computer is getting loaded down with your stream, I think it would be a good idea to have one encoder running on your CPU and the other running on your graphics card. For recording, rate control will choose VBR or variable bitrate. Because you're not sending this over the internet, you're just saving it to your local drive, you can set a lot higher bitrate. To give you an idea, the Canon Vixia R800 which is a decent, really cheap entry-level camera to start streaming with, it records to its SD card on its highest quality setting at a bit rate of what would be 35,000 here. A two-hour recording uses about 32 gigs at that setting. That should be more than enough for a 1080p recording. I'd say you could go down to about 28,000 and still get good quality in your recording and reduce your file size some. If you're recording at 1280 by 720, I'd probably set it to 28,000 for a high quality recording and reduce it from there to reduce your file size. Again, just leave the rest of these settings to their defaults. Finally, let's look at audio. Both YouTube and Facebook's requirement for audio is 128 kbps, so there's no reason to stream any higher than that. But that's pretty compressed. It would be nice to record a higher bitrate, so let me show you how to set that up. First, in the audio tab here on the output page, there are six audio tracks that we can use. I'll use the first one for the stream and set that to 128, and the second track will be for the recording, so I'll set that to the maximum of 320. Then, back on the streaming and the recording tab, we'll select the appropriate track to use. Streaming is going to be 1, and recording is going to be 2. Finally, to make this work, we've got to go back to our audio source here in the mixer and go to Advanced Audio Properties and make sure our audio source is being routed to both those two tracks. Now it will stream at 128 and record at 320. The last thing we'll want to set is on the audio page itself. Let's take a look at the sample rate and channels. This sample rate here could be what causes some people to have sync issues when they're streaming in OBS. Most video sources are going to operate at 48 kilohertz, and OBS defaults to 44.1. If your input source is a video device, most likely you'll need to change this to 48. As far as channels go, Facebook only streams in mono, so to get the best sound on Facebook, set this to mono. That way you're using the full 128 kbps for that one channel of audio. Whereas if you send it in stereo, the two channels will share the 128, which effectively lowers the quality slightly. But the drawback is then you'll be recording in mono as well. It's up to you if you want to sacrifice a small amount of streaming quality and keep your recording in stereo, then set it to stereo, or maximize streaming quality, then set it to mono. Click OK and all those settings are saved and ready for you to stream and record. One last tip is to be aware of the information down at the bottom of the screen. It can give you an idea of how healthy your system is when streaming and give you an indication if there is a problem. If you're seeing any dropped frames, you've got a problem. If your CPU is okay, no more than 60 to 70% at most, and you still get dropped frames, then it's probably an indication that your bitrate is set too high for your internet connection. 
Also, looking at your CPU usage here is a good way to tell if you need to try and offload some of the encoding to your graphics card. And finally, on the far right, you can see the bitrate that OBS is actually achieving. This should be pretty close to the bitrate you set, plus the audio bitrate. If it's not, again, that's an indication that your internet speed is lagging. So that's it. We've optimized our settings in OBS for both live streaming and recording. Hey, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and be sure and subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. If you're just getting started live streaming, I've got several videos that will walk you through the equipment you need and how to set that up. I've also just posted a diagram on my website of my recommended system for live streaming. You can find links to all that down in the description of this video. Until next time, bye.